Hi, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how you can convert the outputs from PyTorch into VTK format so you can visualize it in Paraview or into MATLAB format if you desire. Okay, so here's the code torch to VTK, which I'll go over. So uh, basically what you do is that, and before I talk about this, I should point out that this is really meant to for you to take chunks of the code or modify for your own purposes, because this is something really specific. For example, for every neural network architecture that you have, you need to change it such that the PT file that you're loading corresponds to that. So just this is more meant to be as a template, as a guide for developing such a post-processing scripts. Okay. Okay. So we so first we read the mesh file that has it's a VTK mesh file that we have. Okay, where we want to save the output of PyTorch onto that mesh file. So here we read it using VTK. We get the coordinate points, the X and Y coordinate points of this 2D mesh file. And we uh, uh, once we do that, we reshape it into an XY value that we can, XY arrays that we can uh, take and use and pass it to um, uh, PyTorch. So, so here I have the X and Y from VTK that I read from VTK and I reshape it to X and Y, which will be the inputs to this create VTK function that uh, creates the VTK file that contains the results from, uh, from PyTorch or PIN. Okay. So in this case, one thing you can see is that we are scaling this X and Y. Okay, this X and Y that we read from VTK, they're from a physical mesh. But if you remember, when we talked about pin, we trained it based on normalized data. So we normalize the X and Y here before we pass it to our saved neural network. But just keep in mind that we will attach, we will not plot the normalized X and Y. So this X and Y that you see here, we should not plot it because this shrinks it. So we're going to use the actual VTK coordinate system to save our results. So we can nicely present our results in the physical domain, not in the scale domain. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual create VTK function. So on top, we define some classes. These are the neural networks that we have. So you know you have to copy paste the class for neural networks exactly as the one that you used in your uh, deep learning code. Okay, and then you can also bring your criterion function here if you want to plot things like residual of the uh, like pointwise residual plots for your uh, PDEs in your pin problem. Okay, and you can plot it in a Python as well. So there's this uh, parts of the code here where you can plot it with Python, but you know that's typically not that useful. We want to be able to, you know, professionally visualize, process our data, you know, in software like Paraview. Okay, so here we load our UVP, which are the PT files that we've saved from a pin problem. We uh, load them into the networks that we define up there, the classes that we define. So now we have these networks that are loaded with the, uh, the pin training that we have. And then we come down here. We once again read our uh, mesh file from VTK. We get the coordinate systems, and we uh, what we do is that we you know we already have the x y that that we normalized, and we pass them to the networks that we loaded. So these are the solutions to our pin problem, and we get output u and velocities. And we can scale them. So just remember the output of the pin neural network was normalized. So we can scale it back so we get the physical value here. So then we have these arrays. And then what we do, we can also plot the loss, losses if you like. So that's done here. But you know what you do now is that you have your data structure. So this data VTK is my VTK file, which is from just my VTK mesh. And I take that data VTK structure here and I add all these arrays that I want as as uh, you know, uh, under this data uh, structure. So basically, I take the velocity array that I created. So this is the velocity array that we created that we reading basically from our saved neural network. So this comes from PyTorch from PIN. I'm using this command here to convert NumPy to VTK. So if I go up here, you I am using this NumPy support from VTK utility that allows me to convert back and forth between a VTK array and an umpire array. So if I go back down here, I have, um, uh, okay, so I have my uh, VTK array. So uh, let's see. 
So right here, we're reading the VTK array and uh, we have the array here. So this is velocity. This is the, uh, uh, this is stored in Python formats. This is the output of our neural network. And uh, it's in NumPy, sorry. And then what we do is that we take this NumPy array velocity, we convert it to VTK. So then I call that theta VTK and I set a name for it. So this is a name that will show up in other information in Paraview. And I add that as point data to my data VTK structure. And I can do the same thing for anything else I have. So for U, V, P, I can add them all to my data VTK structure and I can write that new VTK file. Okay, and then I can process it in Paraview. You can do something similar in MATLAB as well. So it's, so I'm also gonna include this torch to match file here. Again, this is something very specific to applications. So you will need to change it for your own neural network and arrays and everything. But um, uh, it's, I would say in this problem, there's not much point in converting the torch file to MATLAB because you can do most of the stuff you do MATLAB. You can also do it in, uh, in Python. So, so uh, but if, if you already have a code in MATLAB that you like to, you know, convert your PyTorch results into something that MATLAB can read and use that data. You can, you know, do it here and create these math arrays that you can load in your MATLAB workspace. Uh, but then, but I would say mainly this Torch to VTK code is what's really useful for us to save our results in VTK format, which you can, you know, load into Paraview and visualize and do any kind of post-processing we'd like to do. Okay.